Hi, I'm Brad Dacus, president and founder of the Pacific Justice Institute. Welcome to Faith and Law. Now, let's take a look at this latest trending viral video of pro-Hamas demonstrators ganging up on peaceful TPUSA employees. Oh, hey, hey, hey. So much hate, so much violence. Hey, 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 hey. So, folks, if you've been watching the news at all, you know that these pro Hamas, pro terrorist rallies are taking place at universities across the country. So, I was wondering, well, is this taking place at my alma mater, Texas A&M University? Uh, do we have professors? espousing hate to Jews and to Israel on campuses that I'm familiar with. So I looked up Texas A&M University, put in pro-Hamas, uh, pro-Palestinian demonstration. And you know what I found out? I found out that, yeah, those demonstrations are taking place at Texas A&M University, a university founded on the military corps of cadets, you know, men and women who want to be committed to defending freedom against terrorists, against oppressors of freedom and liberty. And you know what else I discovered? I also discovered they have a professor there uh, teaching international studies. This professor, uh, Ms. Sina uh, Kara Sifahai, uh, she, according to students, has, has cited the Hamas as a charity organization. Hamas, folks, has been a terrorist organization uh, for almost two decades now in the United States has been recognized as a terrorist organization. Oh, but she sees it as a charity organization. She also sees it as a, quote, humanitarian group, end quote. This is an organization that is committed in writing for the extermination of all of Israel and the Jews living there. This is a sick professor. And she's still teaching, last I've heard, she's still teaching at Texas A&M University. And these pro-Hamas, pro-death to Jews and Israel demonstrations are taking place right now at Texas A&M University, along with universities across the country. Folks, here's my encouragement to you. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. Pick up the phone and let these universities know, particularly the ones that you attended, let them know that you're not going to put up with this. You're going to stop donating to your alma mater. You're not going to give them one penny. And in fact, if you have a, a young boy or a girl thinking about where to go to college, you can say, and you know what? My son or daughter, they're not going to your university anymore. Uh, I'm, they're taken off the list uh, because I do not want my son or daughter to be exposed to, to such bigotry and anti-Semitism from pro Nazi-like organizations like Hamas and those demonstrating in support of Hamas. Now, do all Muslims in the United States support Hamas, terrorist, terrorism against Israel and for the extermination of Israel? No, not all do. Unfortunately, uh, I saw a poll recently that showed that the majority of the Muslims living in the United States are pro Hamas. A poll of, in Gaza showed that almost two-thirds, 64 percent of the people living in Gaza, they are pro-Hamas. They are supportive of Hamas. They voted for Hamas back in 2006, and nearly two-thirds are still in favor of Hamas governing them, an organization that they know are committed to to bloodthirsty killing of Jews. The other one-third, who, who do they support? Well, they support the, uh, the Abbas, the uh, other organization, the pro Fatah organization uh, that is ruling and dominating over the West Bank. Another organization committed to the extermination of Jews, just not so radically as the Hamas. What this shows us, folks, is that reality is not that we're dealing with a mass of people who want peace. We're dealing with a mass of people that want death and extermination of Israel in terms of the Hamas and the people living there uh, in the Gaza, as well as the Fatah 
who dominate the West Bank. And we have it here in the United States, massive numbers of college students being prodded on by radical leftist professors committed to the death and annihilation of Israel. We need to take it seriously, folks. This isn't just a few extremists. This is permeating our society, permeating our universities, and we have to look at it exactly for what it is. All rights are a gift from God, and they're to be used for God's glory and to further God's kingdom. We're opening the door for government under the same guise of health and safety to be able to control our lives, whether it's in terms of our privacy, our information, where we go, even how we live our lives. I had been told that if I didn't get the vaccine that I would be not be able to continue my education. 31 offices across the country handling over 185 cases in active litigation. This just doesn't come out of thin air. The Supreme Court of the United States ruled in our favor. This year, police arrested a Christian man exercising his right to free speech. Friends of parents were at the state capitol day and they were protesting new guidelines for sex education in public school. The world's way is to isolate, silence, and destroy. So you really seeking to represent the low-profile, overlooked group of people yes. in our communities, but then you also don't charge a cent. And so I want to know why you do that and how that happens. Uh, we do it uh, because I believe that's what Jesus would want us to do. Now, we have struggles of religious freedom in other areas and other ways. And one of those areas is dealing with people of faith in the workplace. We at PJI are committed to, to defending employees who are being purged from their jobs simply because of their sincerely held religious beliefs, oftentimes in objection to a controversial vaccine related to COVID. To help talk about this case, I'd now like to bring on our attorney out of our office in Ohio who's handling this case against Cardinal Health, Todd Fichtenberg. Todd, welcome to the program. Hi, Brad. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So, Todd, tell us about this case. So, we recently filed a case in federal court in the Southern District of Ohio on behalf of a client who was fired for not getting the COVID vaccine. Our client worked in security at a um, medical company. So he didn't work directly with patients or anything like that. Um, but he, his immediate supervisor had told him to learn to lead from afar, um, told him that he could delegate tasks and things, things like that, even prior to the pandemic. So he was pretty well versed at leading his team, um, not having to be there. When the pandemic started, he went 100% remote. Then things started to open back up. Uh, the company put to, put in place a COVID vaccine mandate, and he shared his religious objection to the vaccine. There were two particular objections that he made. One was to the use of order, um, the use of abortifacients in the development of the vaccines. And so, as Christians, we believe that life begins at inception, and that every life is valuable. And so murdering of embryos um, for purposes of research is a religious objection to getting the vaccine. The second main objection is that his body was the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now he made more now he made both of these objections to his employers and they denied his exemption. So Todd, our client Ryan, uh, did he offer uh, possible ways to, to work with them, to accommodate their concerns? Yes. So as, as I talked about before, he was told to lead from afar and to delegate. And as the company went 100% or the security department went 100% remote during the pandemic, when they started to go back to work, he said, if I have to go back in person, I would be willing to mask, I'd be willing to test, I'd be willing to social distance. Um, but that was not enough for the company. They said, we need you to get the vaccine. And if you don't, we're going to have to fire you. Now, Todd, my understanding is that our client Ryan was doing a fine job in the workplace. He wasn't fired because he was incompetent or 
not doing his job right. Our client had exemplary reviews. Um, he continued to be praised for his work. Um, he was sought after. Um, in fact, when they wanted to uh, him to get the vaccine, they offered him the ability to apply to other positions. Um, that's how much they, they liked him. Uh, but he didn't qualify for those other positions. And so he was unable to get another job within the company, which, as we mentioned before, most of the work he could do was done remotely. And he offered to uh, take other measures to protect others um, as an accommodation for not getting the vaccine. OK, Todd, how do you see this case moving forward? So this case is in its early stages. You have to do what's called um, go through the administrative procedure to exhaust your ad administrative remedies. And we did that. We filed a complaint with the EEOC. The EEOC decided not to go forward with the complaint and instead gave us the right to, to pursue a suit privately. Uh, so it was just filed in October. And so the other side has 60 days from that time to file an answer or other type of pleading. So we're not really sure how we'll go forward. There weren't really attorneys involved at the stage with the EEOC. It was basically the, the HR of the company um, responding to the EEOC. Um, so we're hopeful that uh, once attorneys get involved here that we can uh, get this settled. But if we can't get it settled, we're prepared to take it as far as it needs to go. Well, Todd, keep up the great work. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a pleasure. Well, folks, we have religious freedom in the workplace being persecuted, people of faith in the workplace being persecuted. But we also see religious persecution taking place in the public square. And help talk about a case matter dealing with this, I'd like to bring on now our chief counsel, Kevin Snyder. So, Kevin, I understand that we're involved in a case involving uh, the buffer zone issue and the fact that uh, the buffer zone laws are being used in a very discriminatory manner, hostile to pro-life clinics and yet very friendly to pro-abortion, pro-baby killing clinics. Is that right? That's right, Brad. PJI has joined a friend of the court brief that is pending uh, before the U.S. Supreme Court. Westchester County passed a bubble zone law, which makes it illegal to approach within eight feet of another person for the purpose of engaging in oral protest, education, or counseling when within 100 feet of a reproductive health care facility. To, to our knowledge, there's never been an instance when this law has been used to protect the activities of a pro-life clinic. It appears to be exclusively used to protect abortion mills. Now, Kevin, my understanding is we saw something very similar to this in a case that we presently have ongoing in Michigan, right? TJI is currently representing a man criminally charged in federal court under the Federal Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, also known as the FACE Act. The Department of Justice appears to be engaged in selective prosecution. And despite the many instances of attacks on pro-life clinics, including fire bombings, it is suspicious that few, if any, arrests are made. Where are the referrals for prosecution? Uh, does the DOJ actually engage in meaningful investigations of these attacks on pro-life clinics? The answer sadly seems to be that the FACE Act has been weaponized by the feds against citizens who are pro-life rather than the pro-abortion activists who are engaging in violence. So why does there seem to be a loophole in this law that seems to favor pro-abortion clinics versus pro-life clinics? Brad, in fact, the text of the law supposedly treats abortion mills and their advocates and pro-life clinics and their supporters equally. The problem is the application of the law. The vast law enforcement and prosecutorial establishment have made a political decision. This massive uh, public uh, security sector is using these types of laws to arrest, prosecute, and persecute pro-life supporters. So Kevin, how do you see this case moving forward? We are hoping that the Supreme Court will grant review of this case 
and restore equal protection under the law so that those who value the sanctity of life are not targeted because of the content of their views. Brad, if the courts do not rein in law enforcement and prosecutors, the judiciary will have failed us and we will be facing a growing uh, police state. Well, Kevin, keep up the great work defending the rights of pro-life clinics to simply have equal treatment, equal protection under the law. Thank you, Brad. Well, folks, you may be wondering, what are your rights to be able to share your faith in public places? Well, we've actually got a fantastic resource for free on our website, pji.org. It talks all about your rights to publicly evangelize in public places. Just go to our website, pji.org, and be equipped to share your faith with confidence. Well, they're, they're in the trenches and they're fighting. And, you know, PGI is on the front lines for the battle for freedom and liberty. Uh, they've been doing so much to equip pastors across the country and to really fight for the values that have made this country so great. Honored to be supportive of PGI. We're living in a time when Christians are constantly under assault for their beliefs in the marketplace. And if there's not someone to advocate for them and help them with the legal necessities of defending themselves, they're gonna get fired. They have no recourse. Most people don't have the resources to go hire a lawyer. It would uh, deplete everything they own. And most lawyers, quite frankly, across the country don't deal in religious liberty issues. Well, we're living in some very difficult days in America where basic freedoms and especially religious liberty is under attack. And that's one of the reasons why Pacific Justice Institute is so vitally important to the future of this nation. Uh, what a great group of lawyers, first class, top rate lawyers who are willing to stand up for freedom and stand up for our American citizens under attack. Yeah, I mean, they can support, uh, they can follow, they can pray. Uh, we need more organizations like PJI. And I can tell you that being in the front lines, there's not enough people that are actually in the trenches doing the difficult but tough work. And that's exactly why you know, this organization is so critical. One of the most incredible things about Pacific Justice Institute is that they do pro bono work. And what does that mean? Well, it means the rest of us have a responsibility. We've got to stand up and provide financial incentives and financial opportunities for these attorneys uh, to get out there and do the fighting. And that's one of the reasons why we have Pacific Justice Institute attorneys on my national radio show, because we want to let people know, hey, there is a need here. These folks are doing very important work and they're doing very important, successful work as well. Well, and that's why they need our support. When a Christian is targeted for his or her beliefs, it affects every believer in America. This idea that, well, it didn't happen to me. Well, you're next. And when Pacific Justice Institute takes on a case, it's not just that one individual that they really are representing, because a legal precedent may be established from that that will protect a million believers who could be in the same position for the exact same issue. Now, we've talked about our right to be able to share our faith. And the most important part of our faith is the Word of God and what the Word of God says about the issues of the day. So let's take a look at what the Bible says about this concept of unequal treatment. In Proverbs 11.1, 1, it says, Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. God is not appreciative of double standards. These kinds of laws that favor one group's rights over another group's rights is completely unbiblical. It's in violation of what God values. God is a just God, and as a just God, he appreciates policies, laws, instances where individuals are treated fairly and equally and equally recognized when it comes to their rights and protections under the law. Proverbs 16.11 also supports this point when it says, Honest weights and scales are the Lord's. 
all the weights in the bag are his work. In other words, God favors justice. He favors equal treatment, equal protection under the law. And that's what we at PJI are all about, making sure that our fundamental rights given to us by God, recognized in the Constitution as fundamental rights, that they're protected and that they're protected for everyone and and that people of faith in particular should not be treated like second-class citizens, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's on university campuses. Folks, let's not take our rights for granted. Freedom, the ability to share our faith and live our faith equally, fairly, and not to be persecuted, it matters a lot. Not just to PJI, not just to you, but also matters to God. So folks, no matter what the challenge, always, always keep the faith. 